So did you know that last year the state of Texas lost 455 souls due to distracted driving? That's almost as many people in this room. Bringing it a little closer to home, out of the 23,000 traffic accidents in the city of San Antonio, 50 people were killed because of that cause. But I'm gonna come at it from a different perspective, an engineer's perspective. Driving has become the distraction. We want to do other things behind the wheel. We may wanna vote in the future, we may wanna go play Pokemon Go, we may wanna eat street tacos. There's lots of things that we wanna do and need to do to be productive on a daily basis, and the driving task itself is now what's getting in the way. So the state of, of Texas, two months ago, joined 46 other states in the nation and implemented policy that banned that behavior, that banned our ability to utilize those mobile devices while we're operating the mobile vehicle. That's part of the solution, but it's not the only solution. There's a technology angle that can be looked at here and applied in order to allow us to be productive. So enter the automated driving system, robot cars, driverless cars. How many people in the room have heard of these? That's great. If I asked this question five years ago, there may have been one or two hands. This technology is accelerating at a rapid rate, and it's because of a variety of different benefits that this technology can provide. One of the big benefits is safety. Uh, November 7th, 2000, that was the last day that Texas had, was fatality free on our highways. That's 5,500 day, consecutive days, 17 years with a fatality every single day. Safety is a big problem. In 2015, 35,000 people in this country lost their lives in traffic accidents. That's equivalent to the enrollment at UTSA. Think about that. Now, an even more staggering fact is that 94% of all traffic crashes are attributable to human error. Our, our cars, our trucks, our infrastructure has become very, very safe. We've compensated for as much as we possibly can in order to keep uh, the human population safe behind the wheel. But the problem is, we're the problem. The humans are the flawed part of the equation. So really, we need to get the human out of that equation and allow us to do more productive things. Now, how many people like sitting in traffic jams? Okay, I got one. We'll talk afterwards. <laughs> so the average commuter in this country spent 42 hours doing nothing but sitting behind the wheel, waiting for the car in front of us to move. There's a lot of other things that we can do. Now, imagine if vehicles themselves were able to cooperate in such a way that they would simply move like a zipper and merge onto the freeways. They didn't have to stop at a traffic light because they were scheduling their slots to move back and forth. We could tremendously reduce the amount of congestion that we have, increase the amount of productivity that we can have, and ultimately be safer as a population. Now what that leads to is environmental benefits. These benefits are like less pollution. But one less known benefit is that through this technology, we may ne actually need less infrastructure. We may need less parking garages. We may need less freeway lanes. Heck, we might even be able to reclaim our garages and turn them into man caves. <laughs> so what is this technology, right? Everybody believes that an automated driving system, a self-driving car, a robot car, is when I can take my hands and my feet off and switch my brain off and this thing should be able to drive wherever I currently drive. Well, that's at the end of the evolutionary scale of all of this technology that started with that flute that we just heard in the previous video, ending with your ability to vote or eat the cheeseburger or play Pokemon Go, whatever you wanna do. We're somewhere back in a level two, level three state. You may have a car now in your garage that has adaptive cruise control, that has lane keep assist. These are assistive technologies that keep you safe when you're operating your motor vehicle. These are early forms of automation. The next step in that equation is when the system is actually able to do the avoidance, not just warning, not just emergency braking, but swerving, being able to perform an operation cognitively by understanding the environment around it. So that level three is coming. It's coming pretty quick. Now, level four, on the other hand, is a little bit further away. This is when the fallback happens in such a manner that you are not necessary to be in the equation. Because remember, those 94% of, uh, of crashes are attributable to us as humans. So think of that. A system has to handle 
when an animal or something crashes into the sensors on the front of it. The system has to fail safely. It has to recognize that there's a problem, move off to the side of the road, come to a stop, and not Im impact other traffic. Now that's all good, but a level four system will operate in limited areas. So we're talking about college campuses, dedicated lanes, parking facilities, places like that. Those are useful, but it's not brain off everywhere. Level five is when these systems will operate in a fully unlimited environment under all conditions. So we're a ways away. And why don't we have one? Well, I'm gonna give you a few examples here. There are technology limitations. As an engineer, I'm faced with these every day. Imagine an automated vehicle that's programmed to operate on a highway. Well, that highway happens to be located in Houston and Hurricane Harvey just came through. Massive damage to the infrastructure, system hasn't seen it before. How do you ask an engineer to program a system to recognize something that no one could imagine would ever happen? Harsh weather. Most of the videos that you'll see, most of the advertisements, this is being done in bright sunshine or overcast skies, not heavy rain, not snow, those type of environments, those are very, very difficult. Vulnerable road users. It's not just people that we have to deal with, it's not just bicyclists. There are very few systems that have implemented geese or duck detectors. And I pity the duckling that will step out in front of an automated vehicle, at least today. Cybersecurity, another big concern, very popular here in San Antonio, uh, but the, the thought in that is that the, there has to be some access to the vehicle, right? Somebody has to, to do something nefariously to the vehicle in order to control it to do something bad. Well, there was a study a few months ago that showed that by simply putting tape on our infrastructure, on a stop sign, it could confuse an automated driving system such that it's not a stop sign, it's actually a 100 mile an hour speed limit sign. So there are vulnerabilities, there's fragility in these systems. And one of the big things to keep in mind is that only 65% of the roads in the United States are paved. A lot of these systems are gonna operate where we have nice lane markings, where we have road barriers, things like that. The system has to be able to traverse all of these different conditions in order to really hit level five. So the hype builds up, everybody gets excited about the technology, then we start realizing the limitations, then we start thinking of the negatives. Is this the end of humanity as we know it? Well, no, it's not. The, the big thing that people talk about all the time is jobs, because as these systems, these vehicles can become automated, there's concern about taxi cabs, the trucking fleets, things of that nature. Well, I offer a correlation back to the 1950s, when 40% of our jobs in this country were in agriculture. Today, that's 2%. Those jobs just didn't disappear. We don't have massive unemployment lines. There's no bread lines out there. Those jobs changed. And the jobs that are in jeopardy because of this automation technology will change as well. Whole industries will be created to service these fleets, to help prepare the infrastructure, to, to do different things in order to allow us to utilize this technology. So if you thought those technical challenges that I showed you were difficult, imagine trying to program a conscience into a robot. This is the trolley dilemma problem, very common in psychology. You have the ability to throw a switch. Your trolley is headed towards an infant on a track. If you do nothing, the trolley will run over and kill the infant. You have the ability to throw the switch, and if you do, you're going to, to injure or kill an adult. Do you throw the switch? That's the fundamental question. What about now? What about if that individual was with a disabled person? Does that change your calculus? My point is that conscious uh, value proposition morality, that's an individual thing. We each value human life differently. Each geographic region values human life differently. So will you buy a car from a manufacturer that happens to have a different morality or different ethics, a different value proposition than you do? Should you? So it's happening everywhere, even in San Antonio. Uh, believe it or not, this country can't come together on health care, immigration reform, tax reform. However, both houses in Congress are actually coming together on legislation because they realize that this technology is important. And what that legislation is doing, as an engineer, I just cheer inside, it's the creation of a law that will prohibit the creation of other laws that actually impede this technology rolling out. So we as a society can get together behind this and say this is something we want, this is technology that will benefit us, that will save lives. The state of Texas is also engaged in this. They recently passed a law allowing research, researchers like myself 
to test and experiment with this technology in a safe manner on public roads without a steering wheel and without pedals. So uh, think of that. So they're, they're getting behind it in such a way that they value what this technology can afford to us. It's also right here in San Antonio. There's a bunch of vehicles running around the west side of San Antonio. And Fredericksburg Road has been designated part of the Texas Automated Vehicle Proving Grounds. So someday soon you may be seeing some of these automated vehicles running around Fredericksburg Road. So now is the time to sit back, relax, embrace your distractions, vote, and let the robot do the driving. Are you ready?